Today we're diving into a paper that explores a fascinating trade-off in large language models, LLMs. The authors argue that optimizing test time compute can be more effective than simply increasing model size. What are the key takeaways from this research? The paper highlights the potential of using additional computation during inference to improve LLM performance, particularly on challenging tasks. It challenges the conventional wisdom that bigger models are always better, suggesting that strategically allocating compute at test time can yield significant benefits. That's an intriguing proposition. Can you elaborate on the specific methods the paper investigates for scaling test time compute? The paper focuses on two primary mechanisms. One, refining the LLM's proposal distribution, which involves enabling the model to iteratively revise its own answers. And two, optimizing the verifier, which involves using a process-based reward model, PRM, to evaluate the correctness of individual steps in a solution. So instead of just generating a single answer, the LLM can refine its output through multiple revisions. How does this approach compare to traditional methods like best of n sampling? Best of n sampling involves generating multiple independent answers and selecting the best one based on a verifier. The paper argues that this approach can be less effective than sequential revisions, especially on easier problems where the initial answer is already somewhat on the right track. Sequential revisions allow the model to learn from its mistakes and gradually improve its output. That makes sense. But what about m more complex problems that require exploring different solution strategies? How does the paper address this? The paper acknowledges that for harder problems, parallel sampling, where multiple answers are generated independently, can be more beneficial. It proposes a compute optimal scaling strategy that adaptively allocates test time compute based on the difficulty of the prompt. So the optimal approach depends on the specific problem. How does the paper define question difficulty? The paper uses a model-specific notion of difficulty, where questions are categorized based on the base LLM's pass one rate, which is the percentage of questions answered correctly on the first attempt. This approach allows for a more nuanced understanding of difficulty than relying on hand-labeled difficulty levels. That's interesting. So the paper essentially uses the LLM's own performance to determine the best way to allocate test time compute. What are the results of this approach? The results are quite promising. The paper demonstrates that by using a compute optimal scaling strategy, it can outperform best of n baselines while using significantly less test time compute. In some cases, it can even achieve better performance than a much larger model trained with more parameters. That's a significant finding. Can you elaborate on the specific performance gains achieved with the Compute Optimal Strategy? The paper shows that the Compute Optimal Strategy can improve the efficiency of test time compute scaling by a factor of two to four times. This means that it can achieve similar performance to a best of n baseline with only a quarter of the compute budget. That's impressive. But how does this approach compare to simply increasing the model size and training it with more data? The paper conducts a FLOPS matched evaluation where it compares the performance of a smaller model with additional test time compute to a larger model trained with more parameters. The results show that on easier and intermediate questions, test time compute can be more effective than scaling model parameters, especially in settings with a lower inference workload. So in some cases, it's more efficient to invest in test time compute than to train a larger model. But what about the most challenging questions? <laughs> The paper finds that for the most difficult questions, pre-training with more compute is often more effective. This suggests that current approaches to scaling test time compute may not be a perfect substitute for scaling pre-training, especially when dealing with problems that are outside the capabilities of the base model. That's an important caveat. So it seems like there's a trade-off between test time compute and pre-training compute. What are the implications of this finding for the future of LLM development. 
The paper suggests that future research should focus on developing more sophisticated test time compute strategies that can effectively address challenging problems. It also highlights the potential for a future where LLMs are pre-trained with less compute and rely more heavily on test time optimization to improve performance. That's a fascinating vision, but how can we ensure that these test time compute strategies are efficient and practical? The paper acknowledges that estimating question difficulty, which is crucial for the compute optimal strategy, can be computationally expensive. Future work should explore more efficient methods for assessing difficulty, perhaps by training models to directly predict difficulty. Additionally, research should investigate how to interleave test time and training time compute, allowing LLMs to iteratively improve themselves through a self-improvement loop. So the paper opens up a lot of exciting avenues for future research. Can you summarize the key contributions of this work? The paper provides a comprehensive analysis of different test time compute scaling strategies, demonstrating the potential for significant performance gains by optimizing compute allocation based on question difficulty. It also highlights the trade-off between test time compute and pre-training compute, suggesting that in some settings, test time optimization can be more effective than simply scaling model parameters. This was a very insightful discussion on the potential of test time compute optimization in LLMs. Thank you for sharing your expertise.